what I was doing, um, I'm going to be talking about playing over chord changes, and we have to start, you know, at a basic level. Um, chords, in a song, you've got chords, of, uh, chord progression, and um, people tend to um, separate, I guess, the, you know, the soloing from the chords, like, you know, it's a, like it's a different thing, and what do I do? And the way I like to look at it is, when the chords are going by, each chord has three or four notes or more, and different notes, and basically you can weave a solo through that um, progression. So you're, you know, the, the first chord goes by, you might play a certain chord tone and then, or, or multiples, and then the next one goes by. So you're kind of cutting a, a path through the chords. Um, a lot of people tend to play in the key, they'll just kind of play a scale over that key or some kind of idea, and they're not really, you know, outlining the chords very well. So, to be really melodic and to, you know, some of you probably don't even know what to do, like you're stuck and there's a million scales, especially in jazz. So this is a real simple way to get started. You can forget about all the scales and modes right now and just look at the chord tones. So you have to know what, what notes are in each chord. Um, so what I did there was I played the minor third and then the root of F minor seven. And then I played over B flat minor seven, the minor third, D flat, and up to B flat, which is the root. Which is so it's the same concept. I'm playing the third, whether it's minor or major of the chord, depending on what the chord is, to the root. I went up that way to the root. So you can hear that's kind of melodic even just by itself. Um, what I'm going to do next is approach each chord tone with a triad. So that, what I did there was, I played the A flat and then I did a C minor triad to approach the F chord. And that has a nice encircling feature below, above, and then to the F. So E flat, G, F. You can also think of it as an A flat major 7 arpeggio with a displaced, an octave displacement of the uh, root of the A flat. So that's kind of a neat idea. You can um, take an arpeggio and displace certain notes up and down an octave and it gives it a totally different sound. Um, so let me just play that part for you. So you can carry that through the whole tune. Um, and so that's part one in the, in the blog post that I did, and um, I would try that and work it out, um, you know, over the whole tune. Try to take different tunes if you want to take um, different standards or you know country music or whatever, uh, rock and stuff like that, and uh, just try playing chord tones to start with. So the next thing you want to do is you don't always want to approach every single time with. Um, with a triad every single time, you got to mix and mix it up a lot. But you got to start somewhere. So once you get a handle on the triads, um, what I've done in, in the part two on my blog is on willkriski.com. So that time I did, after I did the triad, I went. So again, I'm going from below and above. But uh, so a slightly different uh, idea, where I went down to the fifth of the uh, F minor seven, which is the C. I also anticipated the G, the D flat uh, note over the B flat minor seven chord. Um, so that's kind of a neat idea where you don't always have to land on beat one. You want to start adding some rhythmic variety, and then. The next thing I'm going to do, so that's the same. Then I'm going to go, so I'm going above and below chromatically. And then I'm going to do something like this, down. So that first part over the E flat 7, you can start getting into some dominant ideas. So you can go play the third, then the, um, the major second, then the sharp 9 flat 9. Let me just play that for you.
So you can hear now it's starting to get more interesting because we've added three or four different techniques there. So um, when you have a dominant seven chord, that's a very super common thing, Charlie Parker and others. It, you're going, if you have an E flat seven chord, you're actually going up a half step from the, to the flat nine sharp nine. Then you're landing on the major third of the A flat uh, major seven chord. So that's that's really excellent. I think that sounds great. And um, you can just start with. And then, you know, add these approaches. So in the future lessons, I'm going to be um, getting into other types of approach ideas. And then we're going to go into like not just, you know, roots and thirds, but targeting um, higher level intervals of the chord. So getting up into the ninths and elevenths and thirteenths and the alterations. So, but what I'd like you to do is um, take that idea and mix and match um, the idea. So you can take... If I do the A flat seven, which I did, the, you could go. So instead of doing it the way I did it with the, which was that new approach technique, chromatic approach, you could do it with the triad. So. So there's lots of different things you can do. I went, you know, instead of going. Um, you can approach it chromatically from below. So you gotta mix and match these ideas, but you keep the basic same outline of the to start with. So you can take my outline and start, I'd maybe write out some ideas, some uh, some solos with different, if you know, if you can't do it on the fly, start out just by writing it down, mixing and matching. So you've got the triad approach, you've got the Descend to the to the fifth of the chord and do a chromatically descend or, or anticipation, and then you've got over oh, the um, the uh, flat nine sharp nine idea, and then you also had coming above and then from below with the chromatic approach. So mix and match those and uh, start working them into your solos. Have fun with that, guys. Yeah, see ya.